Hi there, Mike MacArthur from the Oshkosh Public Library, ready for another slab of Librarian Learns. This is the series where I take a look at a local piece of Oshkosh history that I've either been asked about while working at the library or that I just heard about and thought was kind of interesting and I hadn't heard anything else about it previously, so time to look into it. So this month I'm looking at a slightly morbid topic of the first cemetery in Oshkosh, Locust Grove. As soon as uh, European settlers started coming into the area, they had to figure out where to bury their dead. A notice in the Oshkosh True Democrat dated September 28, 1849, posted by Oliver Stroud, shed some light on some of the problems they were having with this. Notice, the public has seen it fit without my consent to appropriate a portion of my land for a burial ground. I take this method to forbid its use for that purpose hereafter. But Oshkosh did have a common cemetery, and it was called Locust Grove. Locust Grove was located on the corner of what today is Wisconsin Avenue and Algoma Boulevard. It was the area's primary burial site from about 1836 to around 1850, and it was a few acres and extended to what is today Elmwood Avenue. George F. and Louisa Wright transferred the property to the township in 1848 for the grand total of $5. So this was the resting place for many early Oshkosh settlers. But over the course of a few short decades, uh, it really became run down and neglected. Uh, as early as 1853, uh, the, the year Oshkosh incorporated as an official city in Wisconsin, uh, the Common Council and Mayor were already trying to get uh, rid of it. In 1855, the city successfully purchased 20 acres on the north side of Lake Butamore from the Grignon family for a new city cemetery but it would be over a decade before the city could totally vacate Locust Grove, and in that time, it continued to deteriorate. Another notice in the Northwestern in March of 1863 stated that the Locust Grove had become a disgrace, noting that it had broken unmended fences, uh, destroyed tombstones, and had a generally uh, ruinous look. In December of 1868, the Common Council had finally had enough and passed a resolution stating, that the clerk was to advertise for three weeks that all persons having relatives buried in Locust Grove were to have them taken up and buried in the new cemetery. Any remains after that designated time would be removed at the city's expense. And December 26, 1868, the Common Council declared the Locust Grove was officially a city nuisance. Most of the bodies at the time were then removed to the new city cemetery, later renamed Riverside Cemetery. But that was not the end of Locust Grove Cemetery. So a couple of decades after clearing the Locust Grove Cemetery, uh, as the area started to become more developed, there were a number of instances where they found that they had missed some of the bodies. You moved the cemetery, but you left the bodies, didn't you? On June 12, 1884, uh, while digging a trench for a water main on Elm Street, workers exhumed a skeleton, a whole human male skeleton. And the, the article actually kind of joked about this and equated it to, you know, Hamlet finding the skull <laughs> on the side of the road. Then a year later, while excavating a cellar uh, for a home on the corner of Elm and what was then Park Street, uh, workers discovered several decaying boxes uh, in the ground that were assumed to be from the old Locust Grove Cemetery. Then again in 1889, a few more caskets were discovered while workers were digging a sewer line along Elm Street. And lastly, in 1909, more remains were found while doing infrastructure projects on uh, Elm Street. However, these, because of their location, were not necessarily believed to be remnants from uh, people interned at the old Locust Grove Cemetery. And here I am on Algoma Boulevard, and right behind me is pretty much where the Locust Grove Cemetery used to be. The other interesting thing about this area was that not only was this home to the first uh, cemetery in the city, but it was also home to the First Ward School. Uh, so the original First Ward School was built pretty much where that building is behind me in 
1859 and they had some extensions in the 1860s. Those buildings were eventually torn down and replaced with the 1888 building designed by William Waters that was named Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Elementary or Lincoln School. The, the new first ward school, the new new first ward school. Anyway, that building stayed up until the early 60s when it was raised to replace it with the building that is uh, here behind me, uh, which is now the Childhood Learning Center on the UWO campus. Cool thing about the building behind me is they actually built it around the old Lincoln School. You can see pictures of it uh, because I couldn't afford to tear down the school before they had the new one. They kind of looped it around the old building uh, before raising the 1888 building. So of course, uh, begs the question, they built a school on a cemetery? Uh, so all the history say, again, Lincoln School uh, uh, occupies the same space as the original cemetery. I'm Looking at maps and uh, some plats from the way back when, it doesn't look like they've actually built the school directly on the cemetery, though they were definitely sharing some common ground. I don't think they built a school on a bunch of graves or anything like that. However, thinking back to all those stories of them digging up graves, that actually mostly happened kind of down on the corner uh, over my shoulder here. That house definitely built on the former side of the graves, as was you know, Elm Street or Elmwood as it is today, which you can kind of see over my shoulder uh, back there. So if, you're, if you've ever lived in those apartments and you heard something creaky, oh yeah, you're definitely haunted. And here I am in Riverside Cemetery in Block 20, which is where many of those uh, originally interned in Locust Grove Cemetery uh, were moved to uh, when the city finally closed down the cemetery in 1868. Walking through here, you could see some of the tombstones and headstones that are so uh, soft and washed away with time are the original headstones and markers for those who were buried in uh, Locust Grove Cemetery in the early years of Oshkosh's, uh, the city of Oshkosh's settlement. If you ever have a chance, definitely visit Riverside Cemetery. Stroll by here and see the, you know, last resting place of the early settlers of Oshkosh. So hey, I learned something. If you like these videos and you want to see more of them, uh, you know, do the social media thing, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, comment uh, wherever you're looking at this. If you have suggestions for other things I should look at or uh, pieces of forgotten history that uh, you've always wondered about, let me know in the comments below of wherever you're watching this or contact me at the library using the links in the description. And with that, I'll see you later.